certainly. Good morning, Mr. Brennan, Mr. Rickerman, here. Mr. McDowell, yes. Mr. Duval, yes. Mr. Vine, here. Mr. Davis, here. Mayor Benjamin, here. Uh, would everyone please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for Mr. McDowell, would you please give us a word? Let us pray. Gracious and kind creator for this morning's health and for the ability to assemble here in this room. We ask for your mercy and your grace as we discern and discuss the critical issues that are before us. We understand that sometimes in the midst of chaos, there is development. So cautiously and spiritually, we sit today to discern the will of this, your people. We ask it in your name. Amen. 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 Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? We we'll move the previous question. Clerk, call roll. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duval. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Uh, Madam City Manager. Yes, sir. Today, Mayor and Council, thank you for convening to consider the emergency ordinance, ordinance number 2021-069, ratifying the mayor's declaration of a state of emergency for the city of Columbia, South Carolina, enacted by ordinance number 2021-068, facial coverings. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion? Okay. The second moved and probably second. Madam um, City Manager, I've a uh, I believe almost all of us were, were present, um, almost all of us, March 6, 2020. We had our very first Midlands Corona Task Force meeting in our emergency operations center on Lady Street. Uh, I it was a, the beginning of a, of a journey that we've been on, uh, regrettably, with the rest of the, of the world uh, for the last year and a half. Um, there's some things we knew, there's a whole lot we didn't know. Uh, and uh, together, as a community, we have been struggling to do every single thing we can uh, to preserve human life, uh, to preserve not only human life, but also to preserve our livelihoods. Uh, we stood up, stood up together, provided resources for small businesses uh, struggling under the weight of the um, uh, pandemic. Um, we took significant action sometimes, not only uh, in the absence of, of, of state or national leadership, but oftentimes in direct contravention of what we saw a lack of leadership in order to, again, uh, be guided by our one true north the preservation of human life without regard to politics or uh, red or blue or any of the other partisan uh, dialogue that attempted to infiltrate this good public health policy. I remember, and I've shared this because it was contemporaneous with conversations that many of us were having. Uh, after our first declaration of an emergency, uh, we were forced with the very difficult decision of, uh, of putting a mask in place. Uh, never politically popular, even amongst those of us who have very strong opinions about public health. Um, it's, it's inconvenient. Uh, it's, it's uncomfortable. Um, particularly in summer months in Columbia, South Carolina, it can be hotter than Hades at, at times. Uh, we don't like it. Uh, but. Uh, every respected scientist and institution 
will tell you that masks work to help slow the spread of the virus. And, it, and, I, and I, I'm gonna share one very brief story because it still stings. And I shared it with several members of, uh, of our council because they were part of that, of that dialogue in a, in a um, tangential way. Uh, we were actually meeting remotely uh, at one uh, city council meeting. I was sitting at my, my desk in the mayor's office. And I remember of, of being constantly peppered with text messages and then calls from, from one prominent business leader in town who shall um, remain uh, nameless, um, fundamentally disagreeing with our decision to potentially move forward with a masking ordinance. Um, the, uh, um, I assume a man uh, of, 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 of faith as well, who um, at that time, uh, many of you may remember uh, the prevailing opinion uh, was that this was a, a virus, a disease that only affected old people, seniors. Uh, that everyone else, uh, some people actually thought um, that some of us were invincible. This was an old folks issue. And I remember uh, the comment, and I remember it verbatim, and I, I don't ever pretend to uh, share these thoughts um, uh, word for word, but I remember it verbatim, and I remember uh, at, at the time, uh, in which as he was ex attempting to dissuade us um, from acting and acting decisively and affirmatively, um, his statement was, um, why are you gonna pass this to affect all of us? Uh, it's only killing old people and they're gonna die anyway. And I remember that comment burning at something inside of me. It was callous, it was mean, it was insensitive, it was wrong. And it only inspired me more so, and I shared it with some of our colleagues at the time, who'd also been receiving these constant verbal assaults. Uh, it motivated me to do that much more, not just to protect our seniors, uh, but to protect our way of life, each and every one of our citizens that we've all sworn uh, to protect. And as a result, we've been on this journey together. And we're at a different point now, uh, whereas the alpha, the beta, the gamma, and now the delta variant uh, has taken preeminence and it's different. Uh, we are at a different point in history because of the um, leadership of actually Democratic and Republican and nonpartisan independent administrations we now have a vaccine that our old people are smart enough to know that they had to get that vaccine. Uh, our, our seniors are leading the pack and making sure that they are protected against the symptoms, the deadly symptoms of COVID-19. Uh, other demographics, age groups were slower uh, to move, uh, but we're moving in the right direction. The rise of the Delta variant is caused uh, more people as of late to start seeking uh, vaccinations. And that's a really good sign. As we began discussing this potential action, this potential ordinance on Tuesday, uh, the reality is, is that our children, those under 12, I have two teenage girls, uh, both of my children, are vaccinated. They're not only vaccinated, um, and they're vaccinated of their own volition. Uh, they still engage in social distancing practices. They still wear masks in, in, in certain settings. Uh, they are responsible citizens, but they had a choice. Our children 12 and under do not have a choice to be vaccinated as well. They will in two weeks, be stepping into a situation with a number of loving adults who have dedicated their lives to educating them, in which uh, many of us believe it would be a very dangerous situation for them, and we should do everything possible to protect them. Our children don't have a choice to go to school. 
We don't have a choice to not send our school, our children to school. We have compulsory attendance laws in South Carolina. If you do not send your children to school, you're subject to fines and imprisonment. If we are required to send our children to school, and I do believe that we should be, then we, the state ought to be required to protect our children while they're at school and do everything thoughtfully, thoughtfully and smart to make sure that they are protected. This is not a heavy lift. This is a smart, thoughtful, compassionate action that ought not be political. Um, I don't care, I don't think we should care what any politicians think. Um, I think we should be focused on good public health practices that keep children out of the ICU. I will also say this, I saw something um, that was factually incorrect and talked about RSV and mass, uh, uh, um, causing RSV mass actually also uh, suppress instances of RSV as, as well, which also has our children's hospital at capacity with COVID and RSV mm -hmm. cases. We can do more. This is not tough. This is, this is common sense. This is nonpartisan. This is public health. And this is us acting in the interest of those that cannot be vaccinated, in the interest of those that cannot vote, in the interest of those who don't have a voice. This is us doing our job as compassionate leaders in public sector champions for our babies. And I would encourage uh, each and every one of us to vote in the affirmative uh, to ratify the state of emergency. Other comments, Mr. Duval, then Mr. Rickman, then Mr. Davis, and Ms. Devon. I just have a technical question. You mentioned the president to talk about asking Philip to use a state meeting for council meeting if necessary to be enforced. Is that covered by another legislation in the state? Mr. Wright. It is covered uh, in the state of emergency as well as in the potential ratification. It does cover that uh, normal operations of city council would be suspended. Thank you. It's in the next to the last whereas. Mr. Rickman. Mr. COVID-19 is a crisis. Um, we're seeing it escalate. Uh, we're seeing our hospitals getting filled. We're seeing doctors and healthcare workers overwhelmed. We need to encourage everybody to, to get vaccinated. It's the number one thing that we know works. It keeps hospitalizations out. Um, we need to do everything we can to motivate, uh, encourage folks to get vaccinated. We need to encourage people to wear a mask when they're in public. We need to encourage people when they're, they're sick to get tested and stay home. We need to encourage those who are exposed to quarantine and follow those guidelines. We also need to encourage people to stay engaged with what's going on. There's nothing that prevents you from wearing a mask today or making that decision for, for, excuse me, for your family or your children. Um, but we have, there's a letter of the law out there that says we're, we can't do this. I think we need to follow the letter of the law at this point and continue to encourage and push, set up vaccination stations, uh, hand out masks, do whatever it takes to encourage people to do the right thing. What law says we can't do this? State legislature. What law? There's no law that says we can't do it. The, the proviso. The proviso does not say we can't do this. Yeah. I, I read a word for word yesterday for the press. It does not say we can't do this. If, you, if in fact, you decide not to support this, you're making that, that decision affirmatively. It's not in violation of state law. Under any reasonable interpretation, uh, and, um, and that will be decided. I believe there'll be a lawsuit filed today. Uh, to that effect, but this is not in violation of state law. Do not use it as a decision to vote against this ordinance. Uh, uh, and yes, everything you said uh, prior to that is, is correct. 
We should be doing everything we can, we can around vaccinations, vaccination education, and we are doing that. The city is doing as much as any city in the country. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about children who are 12, under 12 years old, who cannot be vaccinated. And the men and women who are charged with their care and their education, who will stand up to protect them? Mr. Davis. I, um, <clears throat> I, I respect everybody's uh, into move in this direction. Um, I, I, I look around this room to uh, maybe affirm that we're taking the right steps to protect the most vulnerable among us. So, the, the children. And in this case, uh, I think the adults are pretty much uh, within a comfort zone now with what we're doing. But I don't see, but maybe, uh, maybe three, four, five, might be six, including you, Howard. Um, individuals who remember uh, polio, the vaccine, um, and the national decisions that had to be made in order to uh, suppress that particular uh, disease or Ill illness. Um, if you've never seen anyone, someone with an iron lung, then you, don't, you have no idea what we went through. I was in elementary school, I think then. My point is, uh, sometimes you have to make a decision. I have evolved to this point. I didn't think that um, uh, it was going to be th this bad. But I, I cannot leave home without my wife insisting that I wear a mask. I have uh, some sons and some grandkids. I'm, I'm not involved in this and I'm not in this frame of mind for myself. It's for, it's for them because I understand preventive measures when it's not popular. So I'm, I'm, I'm supportive of the, of the audience. Mr. Ms. Devine. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for, for acting swiftly uh, after our conversations on Tuesday uh, to move forward. Uh, I wanna thank our staff uh, protect, uh, particularly our legal staff for the research uh, and Chief Tinsley. Um, I sent him many emails on Monday um, because I was terrified as I saw uh, the reports from Prisma Health Children's Hospital. And I felt like we could and should do more. Um, and he was very responsive with giving me data on where we were uh, and where projections are to go uh, as school starts in two weeks. You know, I shared this on Tuesday. I have three children who will be starting school in less than two weeks. A four-year-old who will be entering uh, elementary school for the first time. Since this pandemic started, he has worn a mask uh, mandated by his daycare and they have not had any outbreaks at their daycare. I have two children who are not eligible to be vaccinated. But as the mayor stated, the state tells me I have to send them to school. And now the state wants to tell our hardworking teachers and educators and school districts that if they try and protect the children that we put in their care, that they will be penalized by this state. That's not the message that we as elected officials should be sharing. We should be trying to support um, every effort to stop the spread of this disease, to protect all citizens, um, including our most vulnerable citizens that can't protect themselves at this point. Older folks can get vaccinated. And yes, we need to continue to educate and encourage vaccinations with correct data. But I'm gonna be honest that part of the, the issue is also because Politics has been played since the beginning of this pandemic. And so there are a lot of people 
who won't, don't trust the vaccination or that this disease is as deadly as it is uh, because of the politics. And we've got to stop playing politics with our health, our life, our safety, um, and, and our businesses. And if we see another outbreak, um, we won't have businesses. And so we look at the least restrictive means. And I think about from the legal aspect, when we go into, I do probate court, we go into probate court uh, to protect our vulnerable citizens, those who might have, be experiencing mental challenges, our children and others. The law also requires us to provide uh, information on doing things that are the least restrictive means uh, for them going back to virtual school or, or shutting down schools, shutting down businesses is not an option that any of us want. And so if we can help reduce the spread uh, within our means, then I think that we should do it. So I'm all for this ordinance. I wish we could cover our colleges and our high schools as well. Um, but I know that looking at, again, least restrictive means, uh, we are we are trying to protect those who are are not uh, eligible for vaccinations. But I would like us to continue to work with our school districts, our state, and others uh, to encourage um, even our higher education and our high schools uh, to be protected as well. And I know we've talked about PPE and working with Richland One and Richland Two um, for to to protect. So I think we need to continue to do that. I think we need to continue to make vaccinations available, um, talk to folks who are hesitant and provide them with the full data so that hopefully they will um, look to get vaccinated so we can get these numbers up. Uh, but I do feel like at this point, if we do not take this step, we are sending our children to school um, without any kind of protection. And I'm not willing to do that. Uh, so I thank our staff for working diligently on this. Thank the mayor for the emergency declaration I look forward to ratifying it and hopefully over the next 61 days, we can look at how we can do more things uh, to encourage more uh, education, participation, and hopefully compliance with the CDC guidance. Mr. Mayor, thank you, Mr. McDowell. Mr. Mayor, I appreciate your attentiveness and the urgency of this pandemic. I operate under the framework of there is the letter of the law and there is the spirit of the law. As we talked last Tuesday, as we struggled with this whole issue of a mass mandate, my response was simply this is a moral responsibility of this council to protect our children. Protecting our children should not be taken lightly. The numbers are glaring, readily available. So even if we operate under the letter of the law, there is that moral peace that sort of sets each of us ablaze with making sure that our children are protected. Each one of us at this table, all of us have been vaccinated. We've gone through that process of being vaccinated one time, two times. Our children, that vulnerable group of persons, those persons who teach, and interact with our children every day in public schools. It is our responsibility to not take this lightly, but to take it in a manner that will make sure that we are doing everything humanly possible to protect. Mr. Mayor, I agree with wholeheartedly with this emergency mandate for masking. And with saying that, I move questions. Thank you, Mr. Nadal. If you, if you give me, if you indulge yes. me just for a moment to make one more brief yes, comment. Uh, I want to uh, repeat what Ms. Devine said. I do really want to thank our staff uh, for, for stepping up, moving fast, uh, 
Teresa, Patrick, um, uh, the incredible uh, the team, Harry Tinsley, uh, and others uh, that you lead. Uh, we appreciate you, uh, Chief Jenkins, you and your, your squad always turning the dime. We, we thank you uh, for helping us operationalize uh, uh, this, um, this challenge that we'll have before us. The not a proviso, not a statute, not a budget, the South Carolina Constitution uh, empowers uh, the city of Columbia uh, to act and provide adequate protection for the lives, safety, health, and welfare of its citizens. That's our state constitution. Uh, our state uh, city code also gives the mayor the authority to declare a state of emergency to afford adequate protection for lives, safety, health, and welfare uh, uh, when, and, uh, when directed by city council, which is what we're doing here uh, today. I did want to read this budget proviso, year to year proviso, so it's clear that we are no, in no way um, uh, reasonably articulated in violation of any state law. Uh, no school district or any of its schools may use any funds appropriated or authorized pursuant to this act to, to require that students and our employees wear a face mask at any of its education facilities. We're not asking schools to appropriate, use any state appropriated dollars. We will provide masks to all the 40 plus schools covered uh, under this uh, ordinance in uh, the city. Uh, so we're not in violation of state law. We indeed are, are fully in accordance with our authority under state law. Budget proviso does not trump the South Carolina Constitution and our rights and responsibilities uh, there under. I do want to also thank all of our education professionals and leaders who, who've reached out over the last 24 hours offering their amazing support. I do want to thank Commissioner Latonda McFadden for being here, uh, one of our newest commissioners in Richmond School District uh, too. Uh, for your uh, continued uh, uh, leadership as well. Uh, this is about our children. I do believe this is a defining moment of leadership uh, in which we're able to shake uh, partisan shackles and uh, to indeed uh, stand up for those of us who are defenseless. With the previous question, Kurt Caldwell. Mr. Rickerman? Uh, Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duval? Yes. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? I am an aye, Thank you. Madam Clerk. Thank you. Uh, and um, I believe that covers our threshold. Mr. Mayor? Uh, 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 Mr. Davis? I, I, um, Honestly, neglected to uh, give credit to staff also for uh, putting all of this together in such a short period of time. I was amazed at it last night when I was reading it, and it was my intention to uh, 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 thank you guys for doing it. And and uh, this just shows that um, our staff is tops. I said it before: in times of, the, of of famine and plenty, uh, get around the country through the U.S. Conference of Mayors and Norman Zavine does the National League of Cities. We've had an opportunity to interface with some of the very best public officials, administrators in the country. I know obviously Howard's long-term leadership at MASC has as well, uh, and all of our colleagues, we have a top-notch staff, uh, do amazing work, and we're thankful for you. We do believe as well that a, um, a great city is a collection of great neighborhoods. Uh, Mr. Black, I want to thank you for your leadership at CCN and uh, what you continue to do for our neighborhoods all across the city. All right, so thank you for being here. Um, is there a motion? I'm sorry, are there any, other, any other issues? Mr. 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 McDowell. Yes. Mr. Mayor, uh, two weeks ago, maybe, yeah, two weeks ago at our council meeting, I talked a little bit about not only the pandemic that all of us are referring to and talking about, but we also talked about the other pandemics that are just as critical in this city and in these United States. We talked about a chief medical officer. If not, this would be an ideal time 
for us, for me to bring this subject back to council's attention. And I'm bringing it up. I've had a conversation, brief conversation with Ms. And I would hope and pray that at our next council meeting that we find some place on our agenda to at least start this conversation. So Reverend McDowell, I, I believe that the direction was that the staff was gonna do their due diligence in investigating that. That's so correct. the conversation to be had without the data and them doing their due diligence would be premature. Are well, you finished your due diligence, Ms. Wilson? We're in the process, and I did let Reverend McDowell know that this morning, Mr. Vine, but, but if it is the will of the council, I mean, we, we can have the information by the next council meeting. If you okay. all like to have a discussion, we'll make sure that we we do that. That would, that, but Ms. Yeah. Wilson, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Ms. No, please, Ms. McDowell. Yeah. Um, we understand that some of that information and some of that data is constantly evolving. What I wanted to do is at least the data that we have, if we could start looking at that data with the simple notion that we will continue to gather that data. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Uh, move, uh, move, we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion with the previous question? Clerk, call roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye.